Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of The Long Dark in our Against All Odds series. I just slept for an hour off camera right after I finished recording that last episode, just to create a save point so I can step away for a moment. But I am going to go ahead and pile on some additional stuff to this fire, mainly the coal so that I can sleep through the rest of the night and really rest up because we are going to get the heck out of here in the next little while. So let me first melt a decent amount of snow. This is episode 40 of Against All Odds Season 4. We are going to take a break. If you're watching this live, if you're not watching it live, you can just jump into the next episode, uh, which might already be available for you. But if you're watching it as the episodes are being released uh, originally, we're going to jump into Federation for the next 20 episodes of that series. After we finish this one, we had a beautiful moment at the end of the last one. If you missed it, go back and watch it. It was really something special and um, really kind of shut me up for the end of the episode. And we're still enjoying it to a certain extent. The Aurora is still outside. Very nice view. Seven hours left on this fire. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... Wait, eh, actually, no, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take the condensed milk yet. But I will go ahead and eat this stale beef jerky just to top off our calories before we sleep. And let's go ahead and sleep for, say, seven hours, since that's, that's how much time we have left on the fire. We, I think I'm satisfied that we've fully explored the Forlorn Musk Egg. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. Yay, we have woken up to a blizzard. Was not expecting that. So we're going to need to keep, we're going to need to stay here a little while longer. We've got three hours left on this thing. Got some sticks, though. So then we got four hours and 34 minutes. And let's see. Let me go ahead and eat this condensed milk, because this is, this stuff's pretty heavy. We need to get rid of it. And it's also got really good caloric value, etc. So we'll work on that. Okay. Let's go ahead and pass the time for, say, two hours. And see if that, because the, the sun is about to rise. So if this blizzard passes around the time of the dawn, so we have three hours left on it. It's pretty good. Let's go ahead and sleep. We're not going to get three hours of sleep, but if this blizzard will pass, there we go. Perfect. This gives us most of the day to get the heck out of here. All right. Now, how much more water do I need? Really don't need any more, actually. We're good on water. And then what else am I carrying that's so damn heavy? I did pick up a hacksaw. I've got some cloth as well that I picked up in the last episode, and it looks like some of my clothing might need a little bit of love. So tell you what, let's get rid of a little of extra burden. Oh. Oh, we don't have cured leather on us. Okay. I can, however, repair... those. Didn't I have a bunch of cured leather on me and then leave it at the the shed here? Didn't I? I, I? I feel like I had a good amount of cured leather and I put it down here or maybe in a neighboring zone. I'll find out soon enough, I'm sure. But, oh, yep, that needs to be repaired too. Just get rid of a little bit of extra cloth. Good. Alright, let's take a torch and get moving. It is time to exit. Why not? Let's pick up the scrap metal. Hey, wolf. It's time to exit this forsaken place and begin the process in earnest of converting to bow and arrow hunting which is still something I haven't gotten a lot of practice with, so it should make the last 20 episodes of this series pretty exciting. Well, not to say that the next 20 are going to be the last one. We're going to go till 100 uh, days in the, um, in the game, or death, whichever comes first. I say 100 days because I don't necessarily feel the need to go to 100 episodes. We're already doing pretty well getting towards 100 days, so I'm just going to use that as the gold standard. But we will keep going until we hit one of those things. But uh, but the, the latter part of the series, regardless of whether it's 20 more episodes or 40 more episodes, or more, who, I mean, who knows? I mean, it, it really ought to be just um, just 40 more tops, I think. But uh, the latter part will we'll have more bow and arrow hunting, I think, which is something I've always kind of wanted to do in Against All Odds. And I've always talked about, but haven't quite gotten around to doing. So I want to start making that transition now at the midway point of the series. I think that makes sense. 
even though we still have a good number of bullets and can still rely on them if we need them. We don't have to use every last bullet that we've got to justify switching to a bow and arrow. It's so much easier to carry around a bow and arrow because it's, well, it's just lighter than carrying around the rifle and your spare ammunition. It's just lighter. All right, so believe it or not, we are almost out of here. Well, this feels good. You know, for a long time on this channel, in my Long Dark content, Against All Odds Season 3 and 4, I think, I hadn't come to the Forlorn Muskeg. I think maybe Forlorn Muskeg got added in the middle of Season 3 or at the beginning of Season 3. Um, well, Season 4, of course, I've, I've made it at this point, but for, um, for, for definitely for Season 3 and a lot of Season 4, as well as some uh, shorter series like the Interloper series I recorded in um, the Faithful Cartographer patch, I did not actually get to visit Forlorn Muskeg. So I've been talking about it for a long time, and now I really feel like I've both experienced and survived the zone, which is pretty cool. Yeah, take that, Forlorn Muskeg. That's what I think of you. Actually, I, I think I might actually, I, I'm being sincere, I'm not being sarcastic, I might prefer it slightly to Pleasant Valley. I didn't find it all that unpleasant of a zone. I found it, um, I think what I find so frustrating about Pleasant Valley is when you're there, oh yeah, that's right, we have this mountaineering rope, which, which we can pick back up. Left that here on purpose. So let's go ahead and grab that. And our first stop is going to be the Trapper's Lodge. Did I already investigate these? Yes, I did. Of course I did. What am I thinking? So we're back in Mystery Lake now, of all places. But yeah, the first place we're going to investigate is the Trapper's Lodge and see what kind of stuff we left curing there. We might be able to go ahead and make some arrow stalks and have those on us. Start making those conversions. Just Basically, I'm going to start going back through the areas where I have left materials, picking them up, making use of them as much as I can on the spot, crafting items, and then carrying as much back with me as I can as well as I move back towards the areas of the world I've already explored. I don't believe... I'll have to go back through episodes 1 through 20. I don't believe I've been to Desolation Point yet, but the next destination, without a doubt, as I have been saying, in the next leg of the series will be Timberwolf Mountain. And then we'll just kind of see how long we can survive. Because at that point, we will have scavenged most of the world. And it'll be a matter of seeing... ...how long we can survive. The great question of the Long Dark, how long can you survive? I believe we've already searched this guy too, but I'll double check him just to be sure. <laughs> that deer is running away very slowly. Yep, checked him. Yeah, see, this is going to be our reality from here on. Until we at least have a bow and arrow and can really live off of hunting deer and such. We also do have a good amount of food still sitting outside of uh, the Mystery Lake camp office, which I completely forgot before I came for um, the Four Lone Muskeg, so that'll help us get out of here. That's actually kind of a silver lining to that whole situation where I forgot those supplies. But, um, but yeah, we will definitely, from this point onward, have to be pretty careful and make sure that if we see a deer, harvest the meat. We already visited Max, too. Alright, see, those crows right there are circling the dead deer in the shed. So that's one such example of a deer that I could go ahead and harvest and get a little bit of meat from. I could have also shot the deer I just walked by and gotten a ton of meat, but I don't feel the need to do that just yet. I want to stay light while I'm so far away from the office. I'll try to cover a decent amount of ground this episode since it's our um, 40th episode and we're about to take a break. Yep, there's the deer.
3.6 pounds. Not... Yeah, the hacksaw will just take 12 minutes, as will the hatchet. Let's go ahead and get that meat. I can Done. Barely walk with this much gear. You'll be okay. Now, nah, this is going to give me a little bit of a stench, so any nearby wolves might start silent stalking toward me, trying to get this meat. So I'm going to be literally swiveling back and forth for a second until we're in the shed. Because there could also be a bear nearby. That's always, a, that's always a possibility. A bear likes to hang out on the far side of those rocks near Max. So can never be too careful when you just picked up a couple of pounds of meat from a corpse. And you're just walking around with it like you own it. Because nature will challenge you to that claim. Okay. Now, I think I had some stuff curing here, if I'm not mistaken. Or I could have been wrong. Maybe I didn't. Did I have nothing here? Well, there's a, a, a ruined Stacy's Grape Soda, which I might be able to drink. I remember some discussion in the comments about that. But, um... We can at least, let's see, we don't have any fuel, but hang on, we can change that. Let's go ahead and break this down. And we'll break the chair down too. We're gonna need to sharpen the hatchet soon. And let's get a fire going. Reclaimed wood, 75% chance of success. Um, I could use a stick and it would be better. Hang on, let's see if we can just grab a stick outside. There is a jerry can, okay. So I knew there was something here, just not as much as I was hoping. Um, that's a little farther away than I wanted to walk, but I'll do it. I'm also still carrying that meat, so this might not be the smartest thing ever. Hey bunny, I knew I heard footsteps. Five minutes, yeah, we'll do that. All right, there we go. Those sticks will help us start a fire a little bit more easily. Now, one thing I also might consider doing is switching to the rabbit skin mitts over the gauntlets. I know that sounds crazy. We've got the gauntlets, they're the best item in the game, but they're, they're heavy as hell. And I want to start thinking in terms of converting to items that are lighter, but still awesome. So, like, weight to... I might actually take a look at weight to um, to temperature protection ratio and see how much it's better. All right, so this is a really heavy jerry can. I'm going to keep it anyway. All right, let's go ahead and light a stick on fire. 95% chance. Should be okay. We're going to cook that meat, and then we're going to wow. head straight to the camp office. Let's take a look at some of the stuff we had curing there. I think there was at least one deer skin, maybe two. So I might be able to go ahead and make my deerskin pants. I know we made deerskin boots, so I might have already used them. If so, we might need to uh, skin that deer that I just walked past before we leave. And that's fine. Because I want to take a look at deerskin pants as something I could potentially wear along with my snow pants. Which would be another reason to put rabbit skin mitts on and save some weight instead of, instead of the gauntlets. Go ahead and cook this venison. And we need to eat it too, so couldn't have come at a better time. Getting nice and hungry. This is going to be a controversial statement, but this is literally just something that's occurring to me as I'm sitting here playing. I think I've adjusted to the new interface pretty well. Um... I really don't find that it's affecting my, my experience with the game all that much. Oh yeah, we can't drink it because it's ruined, so that answers that question. But I, I do feel like the new interface has, has uh, I'm not going to say it's grown on me, but I just, I'm using it, and I'm, I'm used to it, and uh, it doesn't bother me. Um, and I do like, you know, the, the aesthetic of it, for sure. I, I've always liked the aesthetic of it, so... I know not everyone will agree, but just random thought as I sit here looking at it. I just, I feel like I've adjusted. That's really to say nothing of comparing it to the old interface. Don't really need to, because they're not going to change it back. 
I think this one's uh this one's pretty good. All right, so let's. We don't need to rest just yet, but we are really encumbered on account of the mountaineering rope. That's going to be something to think about here. Okay. Do I need to carry the jerry can with me? <laughs> Do I really need to? Hang on. Right, let's go ahead and take a torch from this fire. I did check that, right? Yes, I did. Anything behind the chair? No. <laughs> Gotta be sure. I've already checked everything else in here. Yep, there is nothing else. And of course I've gone through the safe. Yes. Alright, let's go to the office. In the office, I had several... Whoa. That is some fog. Look at this. It's been a while since I've seen fog this thick. We gotta go skin that deer. Thankfully, I know my way around this zone pretty well. See, I'm walking right towards the shed in the fog. And there's the. God, you can barely see it. Holy crap. Alright, we're gonna hang out here for a bit while we skin this deer. Now, in order to take the skin, we could use the knife. Um, does, at this point, hang on, I'm curious. We can start a fire on top of the carcass. Let's do that. Um, no, let's not. Something about me just gets nervous doing that. All right, so let's light a stick on fire. And we're going to use the burning torch. I'm curious if thawing the corpse makes the, the skin harvest any faster. I don't have a ton of fuel on me, but I need to drop a little bit more of the wood that I'm carrying, so... It's just, a, it's, that's why I'm starting the fire. Once we have the opportunity to get rid of this mountaineering rope... Life will get a little easier. Okay. I'll add that stick to it as well. And you know what? Screw it. Let's have the torch too. There you go. Now, while we are waiting, I may as well go ahead and let's see. What we're yeah, water-wise, we're okay. But let's heat up this reishi tea because it'll pass some time. Actually, it's not passing that much time. I thought it would pass more, but no, it won't. Okay. Hide and guts still take... What if I didn't do the guts? Still take 27 minutes, but it's still also 80% frozen. So why don't I go ahead and... Pass the time for an hour. There we go. Still 27 minutes. Okay, that answers that theory. Um, I don't want to take the guts. I'm just going to take the hide. I feel like I have enough guts already. And that does not give me any stink whatsoever. That's good. All right, so the weather's cleared up a little bit. Let's start heading back to the office, shall we? Yeah, that answers that question. Playing story mode, I was like, I wonder if the cave that the bear come that you come out of in story mode is there in survival mode, and the answer is no, it's not. I see a cairn. Yeah, it's definitely not. But we are encumbered and tired. It's the mountaineering rope, mainly. 
And we're, it's going to be this way until we get rid of the rope, really. Because we're going to be carrying a lot of stuff out of the zone. Fortune favors the prepared mind. Special thanks to backer 2650 for this contribution. Cool stuff. All right, I am going to dare nature's wrath by going straight this direction. More of a beeline path because my typical path, and I think a lot of people's typical path to the camp office from Trapper's Homestead is to follow this the rock wall over this ledge and then until you hit the train tracks near the entrance um, and the derailed car to the uh, forlorn muskeg. But, and then you follow the train tracks to the camp office. So you kind of take an L shape. But if you just go straight over this hill and through the wilderness, you're making more of a direct line. Following the hypotenuse, if you will. Pretty late in the day. Decently tired, so we'll be ready to sleep most likely by the time we arrive at the camp office. Thankfully, we still, looks like we still have a pretty good pretty steady hand, so if we have to shoot at anything, we should be okay. Maybe. I hope. So, I think one thing I'll definitely do in the future of the series, after we scale Timberwolf Mountain, we will go to Desolation Point. I mean, because I, I, I don't think I've been yet in this series. And um, I want to go there because it's, you know, it's another area that can be scavenged. There could be plenty of new stuff to be found, but we will go there without a rifle without bullets. We'll go there with a bow and arrow. We'll go there with all, all of our naturally crafted gear. If we go with rabbit skin mitts, for instance, instead of the gauntlets. If we have um, deer skin pants on as a result of that trade as well. Um, I'll have to weigh all the options. I won't get rid of any of the clothing as I experiment with the final combination, but but I definitely want to see what that is like. So that'll be a fun kind of We'll be a fully equipped survivor with some of the best gear we could possibly get. Protected from the cold in almost total fashion and very well armed. Also haven't killed any bears yet, so that'd be a fun thing to do in the second 40 episodes of this series. Either with the gun or the bow and arrow. I think I'd rather try to use the gun, being honest. <laughs> Slight preference. But as I've mentioned, I have not taken too many shots at bears. I have in, in episodes that I've recorded. You can you can find them, but I have so much practice at dropping wolves. Not the case when it comes to their larger friends. I was just going down sideways there because I wasn't sure if there was a wolf over the slope. Oh, hello. I see one at the top of the tracks there. This could be dicey if there's one at the top of the tracks here. Hang on. Oh, there's two. Crap. Thanks a lot, game. Hang on, I'm gonna try and go over the hill here. Because I can. It's right at the end of the day. That's lovely. I'm not going to take any painkillers for that. I'm about to rest so we can wear that off. Or we can rest that off, rather. Sleep it off. 
You know what I'm trying to say. Oh, hello. That tree is inside a rock. <laughs> and thankfully we did not sprain while we were doing what we just did. And yet we sprained while just walking innocently over the hill. What would be interesting is if that kind of movement cost you condition a little bit. Like if you were running around, if you're, you're falling down a cliff like that after an ankle sprain, if you actually saw your condition meter drop because you were being reckless on your, uh, on your bad foot, that would be cool. Yep, there's our meat right where we left it. Stacks of it, too. Look at that. Condition still good, too. Wow. All right, let's step in here. And definitely go ahead and eat that venison. As well as drink this water. We're going to plop this uh, deer hide down. But then see what else we have in here, because I can't recall. I know we dropped a lot of cattail heads here. All right, we've got one cured deer hide, a couple of cured wolf pelts, lots of cured guts. It's good to see. Let's drop that. We've got lots of cured saplings here on the ground. I will go ahead and drop the other saplings I picked up. They're maple saplings, in fact. So I will probably just drop them here for a bit and then grab them before I leave. But these cured birch saplings I can use to make arrow shafts right now. Um, so let's go ahead and be able to carry this load for much longer. relax. You'll be okay. All right. I saw a cured maple sapling that I just picked up as well. So we already, of course, have a bow. All right, workbench. It's going to take a second to load. All right, arrow shaft. I can use the hunting knife or the hatchet. Let's use the hunting knife. All right, now we're about to lose our light, actually, so we're only going to do that for now. But let's... No, no. Ah, nice. Actually, with that coming back on, now we can actually keep crafting. We can actually make simple arrows now, too, because we have arrowheads in our inventory. Just one, I think. But we have one, and we have some... Uh, some feathers. And the nice thing here is each of these cured birch saplings is giving us three, three arrow shafts. So we are making all of the arrow shafts we'll ever need right now. And that's very likely that's actually true. Unless you go for an extremely long period of time and you break that many arrows. Because you can reuse your arrows a good bit. Yep, still got two more. This is fantastic. All right, it is the middle of the night. We've definitely had had an aurora like pretty much every night. All right, that sprain is still there, so I need to rest. Well, let's go ahead and drink, and I will go upstairs and get some sleep. And another thing that I will do is I will end the episode at this point and end this leg of the series as we get ready to jump back into 20 more episodes of Federation in Stellaris Utopia. I'm really excited to jump back into that in the next recording session. Thanks very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes in my science fiction simulation and survival content come out every day at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think. Again, this series will be back once we've done those 20 episodes in uh, in Federation. And we're probably going to go till I would imagine, at least uh, episode 80 or so, whether we die or hit 100 episodes first. I think I said that earlier in this episode. That is what we are shooting for. So again, thanks very much for watching. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think. I already said that. I'll see you next time.